Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you are all having an incredible day to start things off. It's not like we should have been surprised at this, but lo and behold, news that the world's largest crypto exchange by trading volume known as Binance has curtailed services to US customers, sent shockwaves across the crypto community. Today, it's Bittrex's turn, which has followed suit by announcing that certain markets will no longer be accessible to clients within the United States. In an email to its users and an official announcement on its website, Seattle, Washington-based Bittrex stated that it would be making major market availability changes for United States customers as of the 28th of June. That's about a good 12 days away. What followed was a list of altcoins that would be removed or be moving, be, be removed from Bittrex and would be moving to its international platform instead. The following markets will transition to Bittrex International on the 28th of June. I don't even know half of these altcoins. I'm not going to even lie to you, but there's a good, what is it, 31 of them, 32 of them here, something like that. Uh, it looks like, I don't even know what these things are. AID, ANT, BFT, BKK, BLT, BNT, Civic, DCT, Edge, Goop, Innocent, INCNT. I don't know what a lot of these coins are. Uh, okay, I know Mise Go. NXT is... Next, next to, next, next, uh, uh, pal part pay. It's really weird that they have a, a pay and a pal coin. Uh, PMA pot power coin, Re recliner coin, R raver as wings. Yeah, if, yeah. If you're not looking at the screen, uh, I, I mentioned it before. I know people don't listen. Uh, but these are probably coins that you shouldn't have been holding and or been buying in the first place. The exchange added that U.S. customers will be sent an additional email advising what they can and cannot do with their affected tokens. After the affected change date, U.S. customers will not be able to buy and sell any of these tokens. Any orders will be canceled on the change date, but users can still withdraw or hold the tokens in their Bittrex wallet as long as they still are supported on Bittrex International. Non-U.S. customers will be able to trade all the affected tokens, the notice added. Like other industry participants, we will continue to advocate for laws and regulations that foster innovation in the frequent, frequent, in the FAQ session, frequent section. Uh, below the announcement elaborated that certain markets will no longer be accessible to U.S. customers. And they will have access to a more limited number of markets that are available to non-U.S. customers on Bittrex International. Here's the actual thing from their blog post. It says, market availability changes for U.S. customers as of the 28th of June 2019. And they have the coins listed there again without the actual full name. So, uh, yeah, for those who have not noticed, uh, over the last two days, there's been a lot of market movement. And there are a lot of altcoins that are being affected negatively by a lot of this news. And Bitcoin has relatively been faring quite well, especially because we noted yesterday uh, that a lot of the altcoins uh, across the market, the wider market, even like the top 10, 15, 20 coins are going down in terms of the price of Satoshi. Bitcoin is actually showing its dominance in a way that we haven't seen in quite a long amount of time. The Bitcoin price is rising, as is the uh, Bitcoin Satoshi price in comparison to other altcoins that we have out there. It's also strengthening itself as many other altcoins are not doing well compared to Bitcoin at all, both Satoshi wise and also US dollar wise. But um, yeah, for those of you who are wondering why your altcoins might have been going down or why they're just not faring as well as Bitcoin, it's because of, as it stands right now, US regulations. Uh, I don't expect that they're going to get any better anytime soon. I was listening to a podcast and it was, um, I want to say it was, oh boy, it was either unchained or unconfirmed, whichever one is, is by, well, rather they're both by Laura Shin, but she had one relatively recently where she was, I think at, at an Oslo, uh, economic forum and they were, had a whole panel on stage and they were talking about the future of cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's widely believed right now that because Bitcoin at least within the United States and many other places around the world has been left unscathed as far as uh, the security warnings or what so and so and so. And so I think people have come to the conclusion that they cannot control Bitcoin as far as like world governments. So therefore, Bitcoin has kind of uh, had has has ridden the wave uh, without a surfboard or even knowing how to swim. It's kind of doing 
exceptionally well because of the decentralized nature of Bitcoin. Many other altcoins out there aren't faring as well, like other coins are being delisted from major platforms, being delisted from Binance, regardless of them making or having uh, Bittrex International or the new uh, US Binance platform that's going to be created. A lot of people around the world are selling off their altcoins in fear of there being further regulatory shockwaves as the thing that we have um, upcoming with the Financial Action Task Force, which is also a major thing that's supposed to be happening relative. I think it's happening, I think the 21st of this month. Like there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. As always, uh, just pay attention to what do you have I noticed, I, I, I know it's very difficult. I know, believe me, believe me, believe me. I was once also new to cryptocurrencies. I know that the allure of altcoins is very contagious. You see something that looks super cheap in price and you're like, I have to buy this because I can have, I can buy a thousand of them as opposed to buying a small fraction of a Bitcoin because you expect the market to kind of go up and every other coin to follow suit. A lot of people, there's a lot of talk about, um, like an altcoin extinction going on. And this isn't, this this was something that was kind of just touted by uh, by Bix Bitcoin, by Bitcoin maximalists in the very beginning who were uh, adamant that other altcoins would kind of disappear. Uh, and I started saying it last year as well, like I'm, I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist, but I am a Bitcoin sympathizer. Like I understand the need for Bitcoin and why we have Bitcoin and the usefulness of Bitcoin. And I said that the, the, the market from the back, as far as, I think we had about 1,500 coins at this point. I think we have over 2,000. Uh, no, I maybe even less than that has started to collapse from the back. As the prices have remained low in 2018, a lot of coins still have not recovered. Uh, some of the largest coins that we have are doing fairly well. And this, I think it's because they've either been spoken about on TV by the New York Stock Exchange, by the Nasdaq. They were whispered by some other fund who was like, yeah, we're actually buying up this coin. This is why I think they're continuing to do fairly well. Uh, but wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And six, was this 42 coins? Six, seven, 42. Yeah, this is 42 coins that they're delisting on their platform. Uh, it's getting a little crazy. So please make sure that you have, and I can't tell you explicitly what coins to buy. It should be fairly obvious at this point exactly where everyone should have their money. Uh, there's a, you probably, you know, if if you're seeing delistings, because it's, it's not even just that it's just Bittrex or Binance who are delisting coins or regulatory pressure, what, what have you. This is happening around the world. Other people are also receiving letters. Hey, we see that you're allowing this for U.S. customers. And this is why we've seen this this kind of shock hit the rest of the the wider market. But no one has uh there's no office for bitcoin no one has received a letter at the bitcoin office saying hey we're going to be delisting you or you can't uh you're not accessible to us customers it's just not a thing anyway uh so as of the 28th of june if you are using bittrex uh um, check out their website because i don't know what half these coins are they're going to be delisted uh all of this money that is inside of these altcoins currently is going to flow to the top of the market and that's just kind of how things are anyway yeah, let's move on. Next up, Ripple's global head of banking says the company's network of banks and financial institutions called RippleNet is growing at a rapid rate. In an interview with Bob's Guide, Marjan Delatin talks about the impact of blockchain technology in the world of finance and says 14 new banks and financial institutions have signed up for RippleNet in the past few weeks alone. He said, among general audiences, they will still think that blockchain is the same as Bitcoin. But honestly, what we see among banks and financial institutions that we are working with, and we have signed up 14 in the past few weeks, is a decoupling of the concept of crypto assets and what the underlying technology... <coughs> wow. <coughs> and what the underlying technology can bring. It very much depends on how you define blockchain. If you're talking about speculation around Bitcoin and individual use cases, the people will probably laugh at the idea because it is still not clear. But if you're really talking about cross-border payments, Ripple is leading in the space because of the approach that we have taken. We haven't limited ourselves to the crypto use case, and that has helped banks and financial institutions embrace the technology. So that's cool. That's wonderful. Uh, I like that they're always floating around the world and they're always doing conferences and they're always giving interviews and they're always letting people know exactly what's up with them and their platform uh they're signing on a lot of new institutions i think we had news a week and a half ago i want it probably even further than that 
uh, that I think that they're signing up at two to three institutions at least per week who are talking about using RippleNet. Uh, still no confirmation as to anyone, or rather, when we get confirmation of them signing on new banks, new platforms, new so and so and so, I think it has to easily be over 250 by now because we had the news, I think, at the end of last year that it was over 200. So one can only assume if they're doing two to three per week, blah, 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 14 in the last two weeks, they're probably over 250 in total. We never, it's, it's, it's a shame because we never actually get proper clarification as if they're using uh, X current, X rapid the cryptocurrency XRP, what have you back and forth. I understand the whole, the, the, the secrecy thing and the non-disclosure agreement, but it would be kind of nice to get some kind of information. I'm still hopeful that sometime, I guess maybe I could see them announcing something on Monday or rather like a day or two away. Uh, or maybe even the next week, I'm hoping that they kind of do something relatively soon, not because I'm impatient, but I think it would be nice to get some a bit more information from the people from Ripple as to who they're signing on, who's using what, who's using, I think even like a, a, a big boost of news as to banks that are going to be using X Rapid, or who are going to be using X Current with the implementation of the XRP token would also be kind of cool because it's wonderful to hear that you have 14 new partnerships, but I think in the wider, not even the wider cryptocurrency space, just within the, the Ripple slash XRP space, people also like confirmation as to, you know, What's happening behind the scenes? Who's using what? Who plans on using what? Who is thinking of potentially using what? And have they come to you? Like, if you say that you have 14 new banks who've signed on with you or financial institutions, uh, maybe give a little hint. You know, 30% have also included interest and uh, sometime within the next couple of months also using XRP. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's cool that they have all these new partnerships, but it would be nice to have uh, just a little bit more, if you know what I'm saying. Next up, the Director of Sales and Business Development at Grayscale, the world's largest cryptocurrency asset manager with 1.2 billion US dollars on the management, affirms that more institutional investors are moving into the space. For those who do not know, Grayscale is, I think now, the, the second largest, uh, well, it says the world's largest crypto manager, but we, okay, so anyway, uh, it's believed or known that Grayscale owns or holds 1% of all Bitcoin out there. We had information that there was a, a company in Switzerland that holds anywhere from between 5 to 7% of all the Bitcoin. But I think Grayscale gets a lot more of the light because maybe there isn't uh, as much clarity from the one in Switzerland because they're meant to be more secretive. Anyway, in a new interview on the Block TV, Raihan Sharif Ashkari okay, said... We put, our, we put out our quarter one investment report that discusses the kind of investors we're seeing. We saw a few interesting themes. 2018, we're clearly in a bear market. You look at the last quarter of 2018, institutions, specifically hedge funds, it was negligible amount of influx. Quarter one of 2019, we raised about 43 million US dollars. Grayscale experienced a 42% uptick in product outflows quarter over quarter from 30 million in the fourth quarter to 42 million in the first quarter of 2019. The firm reports a major ramp up for its hedge funds with investors. Investments in quarter one 2019 totaling $24 million up 2,300% from under $1 million in quarter four of 2018. They're receiving a lot of funding and, and we never get really proper clarification as to exactly where this funding is going, i.e., are people just funding their development? Are people funding their um, infrastructure? Anything, other projects that they may be doing? Are, are people simply dumping millions and hundreds of millions of dollars onto Grayscale to be able to buy up more Bitcoin? Uh, it's kind of fascinating. I think Grayscale is obviously not going anywhere anytime soon, but it's interesting to note uh, what a change a day makes. And I mean, as far as uh, the transition from 2018 to 2019, the cryptocurrency space has been doing exceptionally well for the past six months. Uh, I'm hoping that this does continue, especially, I mean, everyone seems rather euphoric and happy and more interested in the cryptocurrency space far more than they, and I mean, we even had a huge amount in 2018 as well, but it's, it's, it's clearly palpable at this point, the amount of people who have uh, gotten into the cryptocurrency space or who are also very optimistic on the future of cryptocurrencies. Next up, Crypto.com has added support for Dash on both the wallet and the card app. Users will be able to buy, sell, send, and also track their Dash. Here's the actual Twitter posting for it. Not really much else to kind of say outside of that. I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, 
I do not own Dash, but I think that Dash is important, in, especially in certain countries. There's a huge uh, thought right now. Uh, another podcast I was listening to, I say that phrase a lot. They were talking about the future of, um, gosh, what was it? It was India potentially banning cryptocurrencies. It was the China situation that we've seen going around. It was also the, uh, the Financial Action Task Force. For those who don't know, the Financial Action, Action Task Force, or the FATF, a couple of days ago announced that they would be implementing worldwide, not just in your city, not in your state, not in your house, but for the entire world, anti-money laundering, know your customer, so and so and so, laws that uh, pretty much would place cryptocurrency exchanges on the same exact level as banks, as far as needing to provide cust um, customer information, who's using what, when they're using it, uh, when they're taking out or using and or selling or buying or transferring more than 1,000 US dollars worth of crypto around, you know, so this is the kind of thing, it's, it, it apparently only applies to cryptocurrency exchanges, so that's not you yourself doing it in your house with you and your friends, though I'm sure they would also love to have that information as well. Uh, and there's a huge idea that a lot of people are saying because simply because of that, uh, it may sound weird, but this may also be why the price of Bitcoin is going up because Bitcoin is actually used as this method of transacting volume around the world without other people explicitly knowing exactly what you're doing. And on on the same exact page, uh, people think that uh, Dash, Monero, Zcash, etc., 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 could also receive a huge boost in price. Uh, when this does get implemented, and also if we do have confirmation that a number of other countries around the world are actually going to be banning cryptocurrencies or banning the cryptocurrency usage because uh, we've seen these coins flourish around the world, especially Dash over 2018 when a lot of people were using them in Venezuela and other parts of South America. Going to be kind of interesting. Once again, I don't hold Dash. I... Um, I think a lot of the movement in prices of the private cryptocurrencies is heavy speculation, i.e. a lot of people think that these coins could do exceptionally well, or a lot of that uh, flow could simply go to Bitcoin as people have been doing over the last couple of years, especially if we end up getting a spike in Bitcoin's price and Bitcoin goes over eleven, twelve thousand dollars and the price momentum kind of goes up and we get, do get these laws implemented and people are like, okay, I'll simply put my money into Bitcoin instead. No one knows. However, I guess the news is uh, crypto.com has added Dash. Completely went around the story, but uh, you kind of get what I'm getting at. Next up, cryptocurrency exchange Bitfinex has announced a transparency initiative that will see it put on full view the buying back and burning of its Leo exchange token in an announcement on Friday, the firm said as part of the token redemption process, the Eunice said Leo transparency initiative will allow the public to see parent, parent firm iFinex use its gross revenues to purchase circulating Leo tokens at market rates. These will then be destroyed or burned as the firm effectively pays back those who bought the exchange token in a 1 billion US dollar sale early last month. Bitfinex appears to have launched the sale to cover an, yeah, there we go, $850 million shortfall flagged by the New York Attorney General in April. The Attorney, Ger Attorney General's, Attorney General's, the Attorney General's office said Bitfinex has kept their lost million secret and covered it with a loan from the sister firm Tether Limited, issuer of the Tether stablecoin. The redemption mechanism went live on Friday. The firm said tokens will be burned every three hours until 100% of the supply has been taken out of circulation. So so, uh, they created their Leo token to be able to cover the $850 million that they lost. Apparently, that worked. And now they're buying back the token to be able to burn them, uh, you know, a percentage of them. Uh, and I assume that this is being done in order to uh, create a higher price, i.e., if there are less coins floating around, uh, your coin is more scarce, and therefore the price will go up. And this may indicate as to why a couple days ago we saw the leo token shooting up in price i think it went up by five or six percent kind of all fitting together as to why they're doing this uh other cryptocurrencies a, this isn't new uh we've had buybacks and burns and, des and destruction of tokens before like i said not really new interest this coin just came out it was like two weeks ago and they're already buying back and burning tokens yeah uh that's the that's the Bitfinex Leo burning crypto exchange tokens. 
uh, Attorney General's news for today. To kind of finish things off, Justin Drake, a researcher at the Ethereum Foundation, says or has said that Ethereum 2.0, the Genesis block of Ether 2.0, could launch at the beginning of next year. He said looking at a target Genesis date towards the end of 2019 could be realistic. One thing that could work well is the 3rd of January 2020. So this that comes after the December holidays, which are generally quieter, and would be the 11th anniversary of the Bitcoin Genesis. We've had a lot of talk for at least three and a half years. That is not a joke as far as numbers. As to the implementation, the beginning of, the starting of, the upgrade of, or to Ether 2.0, uh, it was believed, or still is believed, that sometime this summer, that is to say anywhere from now to the end of August, that we could have information as to when the launch of the proof-of-stake, proof-of-work hybrid for Ethereum is going to launch. Still no exact news. We had news about this a couple of months ago as to when that could potentially launch. And people were saying that by the end of this year, we could get some type of activation of Ethereum 2.0. Uh, however, it appears, uh, depending on where you want to look at it, it could be happening at the very end of 2019 or about four days uh, later after that. And the 3rd of January, 2020, when we finally get Ethereum 2.0, uh, which is, I believe, also the reason why we've been seeing... This is why I think over the last couple of days, we've weeks, 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 we've seen the Ethereum price kind of trying to tick up in price. We had news, like I said, at the beginning of this year, sometime around summertime, the hot days, that we would be receiving information as to when the test net was completed, when people were testing the proof of stake, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And when exactly we would get this implemented, a lot of people are expecting a, 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 a large amount of Ether to be purchased up once we, once we have uh, proof of stake. And therefore, the Ethereum price will also go up because people are trying to stake their coins and therefore they need more coins to be able to create more coins. And on the flip side, when we do get confirmation of when this is going to happen, people expect this is where we're getting those uh, four to $10,000 Ether prices. It all comes down to this. So as of right now, um, one of the head researchers has said end of 2019 or the 3rd of January is a rather specific date, but I understand why. And yeah. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Auspicious Agile and Blockchain. Professor Wally from Gunnabot University, SC, Verzali Fine Art, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Brady Neils, L. Doug, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, Shaolin Fried Rice, Gil Boa Snake, Crypto Joe, Mohair Maroney, Carl Birchinoff, Singer Songwriter Mike Savitz, Rai Rai, Yasha Harari, Amy Starsheen, Jeffrey Ramsey, Crip Nodic, Clara T. Snowden, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Nicholas One Earth, One Piece, One Love, Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Rich, The Third, RF Dusty, Cody, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Tom and Sammer, Losers, Jeremy the Photographer, Jim Gardner, Minting Coins, Arthur Yaku, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, and Mick Kanik. Thank you all very, very much for your support at the moment. For those who are not looking at the screen, Bitcoin has managed to pass by the $9,000 mark. It is currently sitting at $9,142. It was up a little bit more a couple of hours ago. There's a little dip that's happening. I think people may have been afraid of it going up too fast, too furiously. Uh, the Also, if you're not looking at the screen, it shows once again the US dollar price and right below it the Satoshi price. All altcoins are taking a hit uh ethereum is down 2.4 percent 2 percent 4 percent 7.5 percent for binance coin 4 percent for sv tether's also down in accordance to the satoshi price i think this is going to come into play very very soon a lot of people think or believe and this is why i've mentioned it before as well a lot of people think that the way that things are looking is that when we do eventually see a $50,000, 60000 $80,000 Bitcoin price that people will focus a lot more on the Satoshi price. This also kind of fits into the uh, Bitcoin price being used as a metric for everything. Future, yada, yada, yada. A lot of altcoins are not. So it, it, it's the, the Binance thing. It's the Bittrex thing. 
And just in general, a lot of people are anticipating a soon-to-be $10,000 Bitcoin. And this is why it seems altcoins are either going down in US dollar price or simply going down in uh, the Satoshi price as well. Anyway, I uh, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning. There we go. <laughs> great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. I hope you have been having a good day, a good weekend thus far. Uh, staying out of the heat. If it's not hot where you are, must be nice. Thank you all once again for watching and listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.